Hello there. What is going on, everybody? We have a lot of news. Uh, big news time. It's uh, time for Shatterpoint news. It's time for Star Wars Legion news. Uh, there's also a lot of Marvel Crisis Protocol news. I'm not going to cover that too much in this stream today. But uh, the the bigger news is uh, the, the they just announced the Shatterpoint and Legion stuff. And uh, <clears throat> there haven't been, at least at right now, they're still talking about Marvel Crisis Protocol. Um, nothing for uh, Armada or X-Wing yet. Uh, they, they were pretty clear at the beginning that they were just going to talk about uh, Star Wars Shatterpoint, Star Wars Legion, and Star Wars, I'm sorry, and Marvel Crisis Protocol. So uh, no mention of Legion uh, or Armada in the Atomic Mass Games uh, Adepticon Studio reveal. Uh, but I thought what we would do is we would go ahead and just kind of go over the things that were talked about because there is big news here, specifically for Star Wars Legion, uh, which got the the bigger handful of news. So so I'm going to just kind of get into it. So uh, also, uh, welcome. Uh, let me know where you guys are watching from. Uh, did you see any of this already? It's like just happened, like just this second. So, uh, so you know, there's there's going to be more. There may be more X Wing and Armada stuff that comes out soon. Uh, sometimes within like a, a you know a week after uh, a week after Adepticon, you know, we had uh, last year was Armada's uh, rapid reinforcements came out just very, very shortly after Adepticon. So there is still the chance that there's going to be actual news, uh, but we don't know about any of that just yet. Um, also, we'll do, uh, we'll do a giveaway at the end of the stream as well. We've got some, uh, I think I've got an extra fourth uh, Force Push uh, card for Star Wars Legion. Um, so uh, this one, I believe, is a uh, Spanish language alternate art Force Push, which we'll, we'll, we'll give away at the end of the stream, which is always a fun thing to do. All right, so... Let's go ahead and start. We're going to start. Uh, we'll do a, go over some of the stuff that they talked about. Uh, we've got uh, Iden Versio and Special Forces. Those guys have already been uh, what, the Rebellion Dies uh, pack. Uh, those are coming out in June, so those are just around the corner. I think some of these have already had some previews. Uh, also, Han and Chewie and the, uh, the Real Quiet Like pack uh, is also coming out. Now, th these aren't super new because we already knew that these were coming. Um, and, uh, so that's, that's a cool thing. Now, if you, uh, if you want to enter to win, by the way, uh, any of our, or the, the, the giveaway, just give me a hashtag, uh, hashtag Star Wars in the chat and we'll, at the end of the video, we'll go back through and we'll pick one of those, uh, for our winner. Uh, but let me, uh, oh, I also got to share this out. Let me share this out on social media, uh, as well. Um. Because I think that's probably a good idea. And if you guys want, uh, if we get up to, if we get uh, 200 viewers, we'll, we'll, we'll do it. We'll, we'll do another giveaway in there. Uh, so that's, uh, that's a fun thing. So if you want to share this out and, and we can get more people the news of, uh, of what's going on. Because there's some big news. Uh, I feel like Legion has the bigger, the bigger news. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, still, uh, it's still a pretty big deal um, for both games. So, uh, all right. So, the Never Tell Me the Odds pack. This one is a bigger, a little bit bigger of a reveal. We did know that it was coming already. It was already kind of spoiled at Gamma, and we also they had already talked about there were going to be three uh, of these mission packs for the first cycle. Um, so the, this is the third uh, and final of the first cycle, but there will be more mission packs. They talked about how more mission packs will be coming in the future and that these are going to do different things. We can see these a little bit more clear and that in addition to your control points, there are other uh, other different um, things that are going to be happening here with certain unit types are going to be affected by the uh, by the scenario. And that's going to change some of your strategy. Uh, and so this can be a good thing. This can be a good thing. This might actually, uh, you know, really change up the game. The, you know, the last one changed up Shatterpoint a little bit for people. This one may be changing up the typical ways that you play Shatterpoint even more. So I think that that's uh, pretty exciting. Um, as far as uh, chat, uh, questions in chat, I'll try to get to them periodically. I'm going to be bouncing back and forth between news and questions in chat. Uh, o Foster says, I'm guessing no X-Wing updates. Not yet. Uh, there may be some later today. There may be some in the next week or so. As they come out, I'll be talking about them. Um, so, so yeah. Um, let's see. Are they... Uh, 
Are they showing Shatterpoint? No one buys it where I live. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I think Shatterpoint's got mixed uh, mixed results. I think it's still pretty popular right now. I know I've talked to my local store. They say it sells fairly well, uh, but I don't ever see people playing it. I think Shatterpoint is in one of those weird situations where people are buying Shatterpoint just for the models and not for the gameplay not obviously not everybody uh but the people that i have talked to are you know their discussions are mostly around how cool the models are they just want the models to paint um and 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 far fewer people are actually talking about the gameplay and and, and to be fair the models are are very nice but uh but i never have seen anybody playing shatterpoint in the store now granted i'm not at the stores all the time but you know i see people playing a lot of other stuff besides shatterpoint but we have a mission pack coming. Uh, these are, uh, let's see, these are, this one is also coming in uh, June. So, again, we've got two more expansion packs and a mission pack for Shatterpoint coming in June, coming really, really quickly. Uh, they did talk about, in July, we've got the, the, the Ghost crew coming out, Kanan and Zeb, uh, and then also we've got uh, Chopper, Sabine, and then Hera will be in there, too. They're just showing a couple of them, but, uh, but this is going to be two. We've already seen these spoiled for Gamma, too. It's, it's two separate squad packs, so they did split up. The Ghost Crew into two separate packs. Where it's going to be about a hundred bucks to get both of them because they're each about fifty dollars packs. But they were coming in July, so if you want to get the Ghost Crew on your table, July is your magic month to make that happen. We're getting into the Legion news, everybody in chat. The Legion news is second. The Legion news is much spicier. Shatterpoint was a lot more just like here's some of the expansions that are coming. Uh, Legion news actually is a little juicy. Because they're changing the game and confirming and denying some things, and it's 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 interesting. It's very interesting for sure. It is. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm far more excited with the Legion news. All right, so um, we are. Uh, they talked a little bit about the Thrawn Pack. Now this one is pretty cool. Not accepting surrenders. This one August 2024. Uh, this one is going to have Callus in there and uh, some ISB and of course Thrawn and they talk about a little bit of how Callus is going to have shifting loyalties how he may um, I don't know how that really works you can put him in either pack maybe that's maybe he does you know maybe he doesn't get bonuses from the Empire maybe he helps your opponent I, 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 don't, I don't know how that's that's all going to work uh, they didn't go into too many specifics they just talked uh, about the idea of the pack so uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see uh, we're also getting a uh, hunter as an Imperial uh, with those those early like shadow trooper sort of armor uh, with his, the squad that he was leading in the Bad Batch for a little while. Um, so this is a really cool one. It's a totally different version of Hunter uh, that uh, they said works really well if you run it alongside the Bad Batch. Um, so this one is uh, a pretty cool one. This one's called the Good Soldiers Follow Orders Pack. It's uh, set for Q4 2024. Really, really far out, um, especially when... Bad Batch stuff was first teased uh, all the way at last Adepticon, so that's that's funny. Um, and then we're getting some more Mandalorians, and this is the Way Squad Pack. We're getting the armor, we're getting Paz Vizsla and some other Mandalorians. A uh, very cool thing about this one is, well, for one, it's Mandalorians, so already lots of hype uh, for Mandalorians. And uh, another big thing is they said every one of these is going to have an ability called This Is The Way with some some variation of that. So imagine it'll be a way for them, for them to support each other. This is the way, give a token. This is the way, g give a heal or something like that. They all have some kind of ability, a th This Is The Way themed uh, ability. So that one's pretty cool. Uh, of course, we already know Mando's coming and, as well. So uh, you know, and we and there's a lot of other things that are that are probably coming around uh, adjacent to this or around the same time frame with the Mandalorian pack and the Moff Gideon pack. They didn't really talk about those because those are kind of already out there. Those are already known. Um, is it Crosshair or Hunter? Um, let me go back. This is Crosshair. Did I say Hunter? I didn't. I don't think I said Hunter. Did I? It's Crosshair. Yeah, Crosshair worked in the Empire. Um, I'm going to have to, I can't rewind my own stream right now while I'm doing it, but I'm pretty sure I said crosshair. Um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, you want Armada. Yeah, no, I, I there, a lot of people want Armada. Uh, when they first started the stream, uh, when they were doing their panel, somebody shouted out Armada, um, at the end of their stream, somebody asked a question. I'm not sure if it was an Armada question at all, but it sounded like it because the stream, all the audio got cut off. It was just very like, like Simone Elliott was like, we're not taking questions. <laughs> it was like, 
I'm like, I, I hate that AMG like doesn't want to talk to people and doesn't want to take questions and doesn't because I think they know the questions are going to be about, hey, what about X-Wing and Armada? Why aren't you guys talking about your most popular games? Why aren't you talking about these games that are like your? Why aren't you talking about your best game? You know, it's uh, it's interesting to me that they're that they're that that's kind of the attitude that's that's being put out to fans. It's I don't know. It's it's not cool. It's not cool. All right. Um, we don't need their scum unit pack. Uh, this is a different type of pack than we've seen before. This is not a squad pack. Uh, this is a unit pack. So what does that mean? These are all secondary. So these are all the bounders, bounty hunters from Empire Strikes Back. Empire Strikes Back was put out to be a big focus uh, of the end of 2024. There's going to be a lot of Empire Strikes Back themed expansions that are all coming. And this is the first one that they teased. Uh, really cool that we're getting... Uh, we're not getting Zuckus and Forlom though. So hopefully they will show up eventually. I'd love to see Zuckus and Forlom show up. But uh, you wouldn't be able to run all these guys together at least... Not in a way that we know of right now, but since they are all secondaries, uh, you'll be able to get these guys and just augment existing units, which is going to be a kind of a cool thing. There's a lot of bounty hunters in this game. You, At least as of right now, you can't run them all together. I feel like, though, that this is kind of one of those things where you're going to be able to run um, all bounty hunters together eventually and, and and I feel like they're 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 catching on that there is a lot of people that don't want to just run generic troops there is a lot of people that want to run a more thematic lists and and there's there's some stuff that happens after this that it makes me think that all right so we've got the maximum firepower squad pack which is general veers and snow troopers that one's also coming again Empire strikes back themed very very cool Um so oh, we've got that. We've got uh, uh, the uh, big focus on Empire Strikes Back. Uh, we have Lando Calrissian with a What Have We Here pack. Also Empire Strikes Back themed. We've got Empire Strikes Back. Uh, Lando, uh, even though we already have Lando from Return of the Jedi, we've got Lobot and some of those wing guard, those Bespin wing guards uh, are, are showing up going on there. Um, if for some reason, I don't like how AMG names Shatterpoint packs. from the That's... Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I I don't necessarily have a problem with that. I think that they're doing something different. It's it's different from other games. I'll give you that. That it, it it's it's not like uh, it's not just the Lando pack um, because of the fact that well it's it's also Lobot. So if you called it Lando, people might miss that Lobot's there. I, I think it's kind of interesting that they went with a a line of text from the scene that might capture what's going on in this pack. Um, I think that that's pretty interesting, but it, it, I'll agree that it is definitely different than other games and their naming conventions where, you know, like Clone Commandos for Legion, it's the Clone Commandos pack. You know, there's, and it makes it a little harder if they're going to do something that doesn't have a line of text associated with it. You know, it's, 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 it's pretty hard there. Uh, like, for for Kenobi was uh you know Kenobi was what the high ground no the high ground was the terrain wasn't it um hello there hello there you know but you the biggest thing with like Kenobi and Grievous right you had you had Kenobi was the hello there but you couldn't have Grievous doing his catch signature line because he says General Kenobi and you couldn't have a Grievous pack that said General Kenobi so they called it Appetite for Destruction which again, I don't think Grievous ever said that unless he was singing Guns N' Roses just off screen, you know. So I, you know, that's it does give them some challenges when they come up with those naming naming conventions. Um, if you guys are just joining in, we are going over all the Star Wars Shatterpoint updates and Star Wars Legion updates. We are about we're we're mostly done with Shatterpoint. We're going to be talking about Legion here in a second. We are also doing a uh, giveaway for a Star Wars Legion uh, Spanish language Force Push uh, promo. Uh, this is an uh, this is one from those early uh, the first AMG uh, kit that came out. So uh, just skip to the good parts. <laughs> I'm also talking to you guys. I'll take relax. I always want to engage with the chat a little bit. Rest in peace, Armada. It's not Armada's not over. There there's there's more. So I will talk about Armada a little bit at the end. So uh, so keep in mind. Um, so this is really a, a, we have a cool one. Uh, requesting your surrender squad pack. Now this is, it doesn't appear to be everything that's going to come in the squad pack. Um, we're getting uh, Kit Fisto and his uh, and his Padawan in here. Now the cool thing about this is we're going to get more Jedi. They they talk about getting more to, and we're going to see this a little bit more in the next pack. But getting more lightsabers, 
Not everybody wants to have to run Jedi, but oh, I have to put some clone troopers in here too. Uh, some people want to go a little bit further and have generic Jedi. Uh, the Wisdom of the Council pack. Ki-Adi Mundi is going to be there, and you're going to have these uh, little generic Jedi Padawans that can come in and be supports, uh, which is really cool. Because now you can have, and, and they talked about this a little bit more detail. They're going to be different head sculpts for these, so you can build your generic Jedi however you want. Uh, they have a Nautilin head on there. It doesn't have to be a Nautilin. You don't have to have all of Kit Fisto and his uh, his whole little Nautilin squad, although that would be kind of cool if you were to do that. Um, so I like the idea of coming up with generic Jedi that can go into the game. But again, you're going to have to have two squads for your strike team, so are you going to be able to double up and these generic Jedi, or there's going to be another one. I, I, I'm not. I'm not exactly sure exactly how that is going to work, but it's a cool idea, and I like the direction that they're going with that. And that if they're, you know, if this was a result of player feedback, I like that they're listening to that because I don't necessarily want to have generic people. I want heroes. I want all named characters in my builds if I can, and uh, and I like that they're doing that. So that's a uh, that's a really cool thing. Um, all right. So uh, they also put out a roadmap. Uh, which is basically everything that we just talked about, all of the uh, you know June, July, August, uh, and then Q4, uh, which is a little more subject to pushback. A lot of that Q4 stuff is probably going to roll back into January. I wouldn't be surprised, but that's that's how it goes sometimes. And then the 2025 stuff, uh, they have it listed as Q1 right now, but that could be any any time in 2025. All right, so we're going to talk about Star Wars Legion. Uh, their Legion had a lot of news. Uh, it definitely did, and there's there's definitely some big stuff. Um, let me go ahead before I jump into this. Let me, I just want to check in on on chat real quick, uh, real quick. Uh, Nicholas is here for Legion, but supporting Shatterpoint lovers. All right, uh, I'll give them room for rules changes and to come out with different named models and different packs. Um, I'm not sure when that one was in response to. I, um, Legion, Legion is a money grab, not very cohesive. Well, all games are a money grab. Unless the game is free, it's a money grab. These Every company has to m keep the doors open. Uh, every product has to cost money. And every business is trying to keep a, a, a constant cash flow incoming. So every game should be a money grab if they're trying to keep the, you know, the bills paid and continue to produce games. So I don't know. I don't, I don't see any value in calling something a money grab um, in this case context because this whole industry is needs to have a constant cash flow and coming to to stay working you know like just like all of you do like if you go to work and you expect a paycheck every every month then you are a money grab right <laughs> so no, I, I, no, I don't, if, if, you know if it's a if you have a problem with legion more specific to it um then then sure your problems are valid and your your, your criticisms can be valid but the fact that that companies are trying to make money is i don't know on its own, I don't know if that's that's enough of a criticism. Um, Warhammer is I don't even know if war, you could call Warhammer as, as, you know, as much of a money grab. There are certain times where there's aspects of a game that I don't appreciate the the model for, but uh, but you know, as a whole, I don't. I think they're doing fairly well with with like the overall release structure of a lot of this stuff. Um, but uh, what is the current meta for Legion? Well, I think right now Separatists are the current meta. Um, but, uh, all right, let's see. Warhammer is a way of life. There was a lot of Warhammer news that came out of Adepticon. I haven't talked about it just uh, just yet, but, like, Age of Sigmar 4th Edition is coming out. That's a big deal. Chaos Space Marines are getting a refresh. Um, there's there's definitely Warhammer stuff. I don't usually do. We can talk. I don't want to get caught up in Warhammer too much right now, but if you want to talk Warhammer and some of the uh, the Games Workshop news, we can talk some about, of that at the end of the video, and we'll keep the stream going a little bit, and then we'll run back through everything again. So let's go on with Legion. I think a lot of people, if you guys are here for Legion, let me know, a shout, give me a shout out for Legion in the chat. Also, hashtag Star Wars if you want a chance to win the uh, Force Push that we're going to give away at the end. Uh, if we get over 200 viewers, we'll, we'll throw an extra giveaway out there. I don't know what that giveaway will be, uh, but yeah, you can share the stream out with your friends if you would like. That would be pretty cool. Um, all right. Shout out for Legion. Legion and Armada. A lot of fans. Legion time. Let's go. Star Wars Legion all the way. All right. We got a lot of Legion fans. All right. Legion's a fun game. They have a terrain pack that they're doing for Legion too, which is a little weird, but all right. We'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it when we get into it. All right. All right, so first up, uh, we got to look at range troopers. Range 
troopers, folks. Um, now this is this is all brand new. So uh, I mean, I'm grabbing screenshots the whole time. I I am uh, you know I didn't even have a chance to do a breakdown. So this is just gonna be a first reaction um, from me. Uh, we can all talk about them together. Uh, the range troopers look cool. All right, so there are some different heavy options. Right, they got heavy. They have personnel. Uh, they've got the. They've got no surge. They are, in fact, a support. This is a big deal. They are actually a support. I. I was. Um, I was a little surprised. I was a little surprised because um, there was so much confusion on the website. Uh, you know, they were talked about. Well, they were teased initially. It looked like they were infantry uh, core. Um, then there was a lot of talk that they were special forces. Then there was teasers that came out that were inconsistent, saying in some cases special forces, in some cases uh, support. Uh, same thing with the clone commandos. It was really all over the place. And now we have confirmation they are in fact a support. They have the advanced targeting trooper. Uh, the, this keyword was already teased. Um, we've they've got uh, a two white melee, which is pretty kind of cool. The whole the boot kick. Uh, I'm kind of digging that. I like the fact that they have um, that they have upgrade slots. Uh, you know, they have heavy, they have a personnel, they have the grenade upgrade, and they have a comm upgrade. So it's like this represents like a a, a pretty a pretty groovy uh, look at at a trooper. They have two health each, which is a little surprising to me because okay, it's like they're almost like a core in a lot of ways, but they're really tanky. They've got armor one indomitable. Scale and spur. Uh, they're speed one, so I guess that's really where uh, no two health. I'm sorry, they have two courage. Did I say two health? They have two courage. Um, but no, that, that's honestly that's pretty awesome. If you can get them in position, uh, it's one HP, not two. Yeah, thank you. I know. As soon as I said that, there's a delay between the uh, <laughs> chat is lighting me up right now. Yes, I misspoke. They have one health, two courage, but armor one is going to help them stay alive. Um, and at 60 points, they're not that expensive. That's a little more expensive than a normal core, but you're getting, you know, you're getting different special abilities. You're getting indomitable uh, armor one, scale and spur, um, a range four weapon, but you're not getting any surge. So like the balance here is is pretty interesting. They have a DLT 20 range trooper with range one to five. Uh, they're getting a T21A range trooper with range 1 to 4. Uh, those are both heavy options, so you do one or the other. Um, but only 20 points for that uh, T21A range trooper. It's suppressive attack there, so that's not that bad. 15 points for an extra range trooper, which is, uh, you know, that just seems to be what you'd expect. Um, I'm, I'm not sure the sweet spot, but I do like the T21A. Um, I don't know if I want them as a as a range five attacker. I, I think, I think that that would be too tempting for you to like only move once and shoot. And you, it's speed one. If you don't want them taking too many suppression, you may want them to move twice a couple of times to get into position. Because once they get into position, then they're uh, you know now they're a tough defensible unit with armor one. They won't drop tokens as easily because of their higher courage value. I think they they could you know play a lot of different roles. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and again, uh, advanced targeting one, the helper text there. I'm just going to remind myself uh, when a unit with advanced targeting trooper. So again, they better at attacking troopers. Uh, they declare against an enemy trooper before measuring range. They can gain an aim token, and then a unit that uses the advanced targeting keyword may only form one attack pool. Um, so anytime they attack a trooper, they're going to get an aim token. Uh, that helps the you know limit the the lack of of surge. But of course, I'm gonna want to put you know I'm gonna want to put grenades on these guys. I'm gonna want to put frag grenades so they get that you know if they can get close enough, uh, then they're gonna get that awesome uh, you know surge to crit, which is just gonna be really really nice for them. But I mean they, they've already got really good range. I, it, they're range troopers, right? Oh, that's funny. I, why did I not even think? I'm thinking range like home on the range, right? Uh, but but they have excellent range. Um, let's see what you guys think. Um, Phase two is 60 points too, which is kind of crazy. These guys are a good match for that. Yeah, yeah, it could be. I mean, they still got the red defense uh, and then armor one. It's pretty cool. Yeah, they're 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 not they're, not, they're more expensive than most core, but they are a support. Um, so again, this is also a cool way if you want to really max out your infantry. You want to go all core, all stormtroopers and and range troopers. If you want to go without any vehicles, 
uh, and make armor piercing attacks useless against your, uh, well, mostly useless. I guess you have armor one there, but that's pretty cool. All right, uh, clone commandos. Let's talk about the clone commandos. Um, they're, they look pretty good. Surprises on this one, too. A lot of upgrades. A lot of upgrades. We're not seeing all of the upgrades that are going to come with this pack here because we have the Katarn pattern armor, which looks really cool and is a zero point. Uh, which is really cool. Uh, there are four, four miniatures and no, no mini upgrades. You can't add anything to them. No heavies, no, no, no nothing. So, so let's, look, let's look at these guys. Um, four minis, they have training. They have equipment. They have grenades. They have comms. They have weapon upgrades. If we, we can't assume too much of that. I, I love the Katarn pattern armor. If they'd be assigned more than one wound from... Uh, a non-melee attack, you can expose this card and they suffer one wound instead. Now they are only one health, which is like if they were two health, that would be like crazy because they could just shrug off any ranged attack, you know. Um, but yeah, you assume they have heavy? No, no, they have no heavy. They have no heavy. Look at look at the upgrades again. It's it's you know training, equipment, grenades, com, and weapon. Um, this, well, they're they're what I think instead of heavy, they will have weapon upgrades. And the big difference between the oh, they have to have oh, wait a second. Oh no no no! They are, the only thing they have to equip is the Katarn pattern armor. Oh, so that does mean that you couldn't put um, a different equipment on them. So you can't just say like you can't uh, you know put the emergency stims or something like that. Um, yeah, but they're a straight up seventy five points, and they're also a support. This is also a really big surprise. This, these guys, it's said that these guys were special forces on the on the pre-order page. Um, we're not seeing any surge on them, which you kind of expect from clones. <clears throat> um, they are clone troopers, though, so they're going to still be able to borrow a little bit of uh, stuff. They have suppressive uh, weapon. They have a nice little vibroblade gauntlet, uh, and we're only seeing the regular generic clone commando version. There's a whole different way to run this unit. Uh, if you want to run them as Delta Squad, we haven't seen that yet. So there's plenty of spoiler territory to go with these guys. Uh, so that's a pretty interesting one. Now these have complete the mission, so they're going to be placing that priority mission token on the battlefield at some point. When they can get to that place, they're going to gain surge to, for defense or critical two uh, if they're uh, you know defending or attacking close to that point uh, respectively. So complete the mission is a cool keyword. We talked about that in the new rules update. That one's in there. Um, they are going to be there to try to lock down an area, uh, which is cool. Um, they have infiltrate, which it kind of it makes sense. You, it, you, you. This means you may want to put in a bid to go first. It depends on if you tend to face people that also run infiltrate or not. But if you can drop them on their complete the mission area, that's going to be really cool. Recharge one. Um, recharge one is is for shields, right? They don't have anything that's giving them shields, so. Oh, they're shielded one. <laughs> That's the next. <laughs> I was thinking it, it, it was a spoiler for the next upgrade. Uh, they recharge one and shielded one, uh, which is awesome. So I guess they can just shrug off any one attack um, if they were to. No, no, they just suffer damage. Shielded one doesn't deal with damage; it deals with canceling hit results. So, um, so they can shrug off smaller attacks with shields, uh, and then they can shrug off bigger attacks with the Katarn pattern armor and only losing one guy. If you can get a medic close to them. Then, uh, then that's also really good. But that Katarn pattern armor is just once per game. So, uh, yeah, no, they, they seem very cool. They're going to be, uh, I think they're going to be really fun. I, as, as I look at this unit card, I, I'm smiling a lot. I like these. I like these a lot. And I didn't get to really read it that much during the actual live stream because they, you know, during their, 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 their preview event. Anyway, Clone Commandos look really cool. Uh, we will keep going. We'll keep going. Um, the Bad Batch. Uh, so this was already spoiled uh, a couple of days ago because they were giving out Bad Batch unit cards. They were giving out Bad Batch unit cards, and uh, this gives us more information so we can talk about it at first. At first, we just saw the Bad Batch unit card. Uh, mixed emotions on this one because it has five heavies and it has the mandatory equip Hunter, Wrecker, Echo, Tech, and Crosshair. Um we get a lot more information now because it's 160 points for the Bad Batch as an operative. Uh, the Bad Batch has zero units 
in it natively, but you're putting those five Bad Batch members on there as mandatory equips. They have a zero point cost each, it looks like. Hunter costs zero, Crosshead, Crosshair costs zero, so that seems appropriate. We are over 200 units, or 200 viewers, by the way, folks. We are over 200, so it's time for it's time to add another giveaway. Wow, that's that's pretty cool. Um, all right, so we are going to do a second for you Legion fans. We're going to do a second giveaway uh, for uh, for the M for the force push. It's Spanish language force push. Empujar uh, con uh, la fuerza. I didn't have to do that. It's not German. It's Spanish. Uh, but yeah, two. We have two of these. Uh, let's give a hashtag uh, a hashtag Star Wars. Uh, I'll go ahead and announce the winner for the first one. Now that's going to be uh, Andrew Lynch. Congratulations, Andrew Lynch. Shoot me an email at mailcrabock at gmail.com. Let me know what you won so I don't get you confused with any of the other giveaways. We have another giveaway. We have giveaways going on on Patreon right now, and there's also one in our Discord. So I don't want to get uh, those two mixed up. Uh, we'll do the other one uh, at the end. So, um, all right. Uh, so let's let's talk a little bit more about the Bad Batch. Um, this is this is exciting. Uh, we've got Hunter in here, uh, and we've got Crosshair spoiled. We don't have Wrecker, Echo, or Tech spoiled yet. Omega is in here as uh, as a counterpart, which is awesome. I love that they're like this is so cool that they're like taking advantage of different mechanics and employing them in meaningful ways. I love the way they've done Omega here. Uh, I also like that the Bad Batch, it, they're Republic, but they did confirm, yes, they can also go in Rebels, but they'll be mercenaries in the Rebellion. Like, that makes perfect sense. Also, Omega is only attachable if you're using them as mercenaries in the Rebellion. Brilliant. It's thematic. It makes sense. I think we'll have to look at them a lot more, like, you know, a lot more detail to see if they're balanced or not. But I'm guessing the balance probably won't be too bad. I think Andrew Dursum, who's uh, uh, been doing a lot of Legion stuff, has a really good grasp for the game and seems to be doing really good stuff so far. So um, I like I, it's generally the stuff they're doing for Legion seems very cool. The only problem I'd give with Legion right now is that it's just it's on a much slower pace than all the other games. So while the stuff that's coming out seems good, we're just not getting that much stuff. And I also have a, one other big complaint about legion is that we didn't get gungans announced what in the heck what in the heck is going on guys why are no gungans you know makes us wait until mini stravaganza for that i mean no, and i don't think they were going to see gungans at mini stravaganza either i think if they were going to do gungans i mean first off this should have been the year to do gungans why not announce them at adepticon really guys like if you're gonna come on all right anyway uh so the, all right the bad batch they've got impervious they got no surge, but they're two health per, which is good for a hero unit. Uh, you got three courage, which is also pretty nice. Again, with five minis, two health per, that means you're probably looking at ten health. You're probably looking at ten health. The reason I say probably is because some of the miniatures could have a uh, uh, an override on their health. Like you might have tech with a one health, possibly, or something like that. Um, but probably ten health. Uh, they also have. Uh, impervious, which is going to really help them with piercing. The red defense die is good. They have scale, steady, which is going to be really nice for these guys. Um, they have sharpshooter one, which is also very nice. Uh, and then we're not regs, which is that kind of that kind of thing that hurts them a little bit. Um, we don't have any other upgrades too, so you can't put like any gear or comms or anything like that on the bad batch. At first, I was afraid that. When I saw this card, that it was like, this is this the direction they're going with Legion. You can't customize your units anymore. But after everything else that we've seen, uh, I think this is just a, a one-off. Uh, I don't think this is necessarily the problem that we're going to be seeing. Because the other units are, are certainly customizable. So I think it was just a balanced thing for the Bad Batch that they were very specific. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. I'll deal with that. Okay, so um, Hunter has uh he doesn't add any extra melee which is weird because like they have advanced combat training but like we don't have hunter's knife right but he's got the he's got a special ability it looks like it's a free action choose a non hero or a non leader or operative enemy trooper at range 1 and in line of sight roll a black attack die on a hit or crit result the unit suffers one wound so that's kind of like his his thing he's not adding to the melee attack pool but he gets a free attack 
uh, which is actually probably a little better. And since that can just go through Guardian or anything like that, which again, I'm not super crazy about um, about how that sort of works, but uh, but at least they're at least the rules are consistent now because it's the same kind of thing that Mando had with his sniper rifle. That was like, wait, you can get people inside a closed transport with that. Now it's like, no, no, no. Now you can't because you can't draw a line of sight to somebody who's inside a closed transport now. Um, all right. Um, anyone? Tyler asks, is anyone seeing a missed opportunity that uh, Record doesn't have a gunky on his back? Oh, seems like a homebrew. Yeah, that would be funny. Yeah, I could see that. Um, crosshair, he does add the 1 to 5 uh, range uh, red die attack. Um, when an attack pool contains only this weapon, it gains critical 1, high velocity, pierce 1, and precise 1. Uh, so, that's pretty cool. Uh, as long as you have an AM, he's, Crosshair is going to hit. He's going to put 1 damage in, uh, and there's almost no way to... Almost no way to stop that. So that's that's pretty cool. I say almost, but there's actually a lot of ways to stop that. But you know, they're not easy. There's no easy way to stop that. Um, Omega's, uh, she's a counterpart for the Bad Batch for Rebel only. She only has one health. She has her little energy bow that uh, can do uh, range two, two white dice, which is kind of cool. Um, she's got, I'm part of the squad too. Uh, Omega does not have to be assigned wounds uh, or be defeated first due to the counterpart keyword oh okay that's that's kind of cool so they can keep her alive that's thematic while omega is on the battlefield uh the bad batch may use claim and sabotage repair actions when she is in base contact with an objective token oh uh, as if she was the unit leader oh that's cool that's 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 pretty cool i i i don't know how many situations that's going to be super useful in but that seems like that could be that just gives you a lot more flexibility i dig it I like it. Okay. Um, then, uh, this is a big deal. This is a, a big deal, what's coming up. Um, our our Rebel Saboteurs have been renamed. So, I love this. Um, this is going to go back to, uh, what, Adepticon? Or was it Last Adepticon or Mini Stravaganza? They were teasing the future of Star Wars Legion. And they talked about, uh, they showed us some proofs of this unit from Andor. And they called them Rebel Saboteurs. Uh, and I was not, obviously, was not the only person that had a problem with this. Like, they're not Rebel Saboteurs. We already have a unit in game called Rebel Saboteurs. Please don't call them Rebel Saboteurs. And they didn't want to use, uh, a, you know, a name that was going to be, um, that was going to be, like, controversial. Like, they didn't want to call them Rebel Terrorists. They didn't want to call them you know, insurgents or, or things like that. And even though, like, people, I think a lot of people were like, no, call them insurgents, that'd be fine. So they now call them the Rebel Sleeper Cell. And this is really a good, it's a good name. I'm glad they named it, so it's not going to be confusing because it would have been really confusing if they were called Rebel Saboteurs. And then when you said Rebel Saboteurs, I didn't know if you were talking about the Rebel Special Forces Saboteur, um, you know, strike team, or the Rebel Forces Saboteur actual unit. Because, you know, so th anyway... Maybe it's not a big deal to a lot of you, but to me, that was a big deal. I, I thought it was a really good idea. And and, the, and they're painted now, so these guys are uh, looking nice. These are scheduled for quarter four, so these are still a little ways out. And this is this is kind of where it gets to, like, I, you know, I, I wish there was more Legion coming out than it used to be. It used to be, like, an expansion every month, and now it's just like, okay, you're probably getting, like, three or four things a year-ish, something like that. Um, later on in quarter four, we're also getting... A really cool thing. This is something that hasn't been spoiled at all yet. So I love it. It's the Imperial Riot Control Squad. This is so cool because this this does so many things. This taps into Andor a little bit, but it taps into video games. This really this is a teaser for all you video game lovers out there that want Cal Kestis in the game. This is like hope for all of these folks. Uh, it's there's you've got your riot control troop now. Granted, they already had these guys in uh, in Star Wars Imperial Assault, um, and so for you Imperial Assault fans, you're getting a little bit of a, a taste of something that you didn't have before. Uh, you've got K2 series droids in here, and uh, Will Schick said that you can add two of them with upgrade cards, which is a really cool thing. K2s are gonna be so much fun to have walking around with the Empire, and I and I. 
I love it because I love that you have K2SO for the Rebels and then you have K2s for the for the Empire because there's a lot of times where you see the Rebels stealing stuff from the Empire and it doesn't get accurately portrayed on both sides. Like in X-Wing, you have the Lambda shuttle for the Empire, but you don't have the shuttle Tidarium for the for the Rebels. In Star Wars Armada, you have you know the Quasar for the Rebels. I'm sorry for the for the Empire, but you don't have you know the Quasar for the Rebels because they stole one. You see the Rebels using it a lot. Here, you know we've gotten to a point where we see K2s on both sides. You know you saw them in Rogue One, but you also saw them a lot in the video games for the Empire. So. Um, so yeah, I like that we're seeing K2s on both sides of the Rebel and Empire conflict here. Uh, and the other cool thing about this pack is this is going to be a big melee option for, uh, for the Empire. Uh, like, a, a troopers, like your, your generic stormtroopers that have a strong melee option. I think this is a good thing. I think it's going to be, uh, really, really cool. Um, yeah, I'm glad that they're willing to do this too. Pop Bunzi, uh, Bernsey says, I'm so glad they're willing to do this. Uh, this doesn't, now granted, they didn't say that this is, confirmation that we're getting video game stuff or anything like that but it's definitely a step along those lines now i also wonder how many people since they're riot control how many people are going to paint these guys um kind of black like the purge troopers like i don't i wouldn't recommend painting them as purge troopers because i think we're going to see purge troopers i think we're going to see purge troopers that are going to be like this but black but with the staff with the purple glow instead and my fear is that if you paint these guys like purge troopers then when the purge troopers come out, there's going to be confusion on the battlefield over which unit is which. So it's like it's one of those reasons I don't like people painting their stormtroopers black as much because then it's when you line them up next to like death troopers, it, it it's a little ambiguous who who is what and you know and and you know usually don't like to do stuff like that. But these guys look really cool, and I'm really impressed with these ones. Um, now we need a clone shock trooper. Oh yeah, of course we need more shock troopers. We need more melee. Uh, more melee combat in Legion. I love it. And we got some looks at the crab droids. Uh, and I know a lot of people were very, very happy about the crab droids showing up. Um, they're going to have different weapon options. Uh, they've already talked about that a little bit. They also confirmed we'll be getting two in a pack. So it's going to be a unit of two, it looks like, for your crab droids. You won't just have a single crab rolling out there by themselves. So uh, so for you crab lovers out there, that's double the uh, double the crab legs. Double the assembly, double the painting requirements, and double the fun. It is weird in this picture, though, that it looks like we're getting, like, two different size bases, and I wonder if it's just the perspective is off a little bit, but the one in the back looks like it's a large base, and the one in the front foreground looks like it's more of a medium or smaller base. I'm not sure um, if that's just, a, you know, uh, a weird sort of uh, perspective on the picture, or if they got the bases wrong in the art again, like they, like they did with the swoop bikes. I'm not sure. Again, there are a lot of mistakes with some of the preview things that we see and some of the pre-order pages and all of that. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see until we get more concrete information. But uh, we have the crab droids are looking pretty cool. Also, slated for quarter four 2024. If we end up getting all this quarter four stuff, it's going to be a very big fourth quarter for Star Wars Legion. So that's very cool. Moving forward in time into 2025, We've got, but break out the butter and lemons from the chat. Very funny. Two different angles from AP. Yeah, it is. It is two different angles. It, it just it just looks kind of weird to me why the base looks so much larger there. Yeah, and, and and I wouldn't even wonder about that if they hadn't actually gotten the bases wrong in 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 some of the promotional art before, which is it's a weird thing. All right, they're doing a terrain pack, outer rim battles terrain pack. Um, there's more to this terrain pack than what they show in this picture here. Is I don't have much to say about this. All they they did suggest that this was going to be that these would count as barricades. Um, and the only thing I, I I wonder about that is all right, are they actually going to count as barricades? Which means if I have force lift, will I be able to move any of these pieces? You know how is how are these going to interact with force lift, which does let me um, let me kind of mess with barricades in the game because I. You know, if they if the, all of this stuff is actually usable um, in the same way that barricades are with force lift, then sure, let's see more of it. Let's see force lift become more of a thing. Let's have Jedi out there moving terrain. But other than that, if not, I don't see the point. I mean, there's enough terrain. There's nothing that this is doing that a million other places aren't already doing. So, you know, we've got so many terrain companies out there making really good terrain, like Legion terrain or Imperial terrain, making fantastic terrain out there. And, and all of the 3D printing um, 
you know, Etsy shops and all this other stuff. There's so much of it. Um, I don't know if this is really going to hit the market very well. So it looks like a hard pass for me you know, based on what they've told us. Uh, then we've got Aqua Droids. Let's talk about the Aqua Droids. These are really cool. Um, I'm trying to think right now. I hadn't had time to really research them. Are these the guys, I think, these are the guys that attacked Kamino. Uh, let me know in the chat. Uh, are these those separate? Those, basically, when, when Grievous, you know, when the um, the Tridents were attacking Kamino and they were launching, these guys were like jumping out of the water and then landing in Kamino. If so, my prediction is that these guys are going to have Infiltrate. That would be the most thematic thing to give them. Um, they attack Camino in season three. Thank you. Uh, yes, yes. All right. So that's what I thought. Yes, Camino. All right. Good. Great confirmation from the chat. Um, the reason I brought that up is because there were, in, I think, in season seven of Clone Wars, when the Bad Batch were introduced, there were some of Wat Tambor's. Um, there were some new droids introduced there, and I'm, I have to look them up again because I only watched season seven the one time through. So I know that there are even more droid types uh, eligible to show up in the game. But yeah, the other thing with these guys is they have very big bases. They are huge. They are chunky. Um, these are probably going to be twice as tall as normal uh, miniatures. Sixty to an extra sixty to hundred um, percent size. I'm guessing as far as height, they look very very big. Um, I'm guessing we're getting four in a pack. I mean, the fact that they're showing us four of them must be significant. Um, and, I, and if we're getting four in a pack, does that mean that they'll be a heavy? Uh, AMG has talked a lot about how they wanted to shake up the norms and, and change um, a lot of the, the standard roles and things that we would expect from, from the game. And this is a big one, uh, a big way to do that. So, um, yeah, they look, they look pretty wild. They look pretty wild. Um, and we got ARF Troopers. ARF Troopers are also coming in 2025. Uh, this says quarter one. The fact that they're not painted yet, you know, I, I don't know if it'll actually make a quarter one. It could be, but if it is, I don't. Ex I, I wouldn't expect this to be like a January release. I would say March at the earliest. But, but still, looks pretty cool. I, I, I don't have a, really a soft spot for ARF troopers. I mean, they, they're fine, I suppose. Uh, but what I think really makes the ARF troopers, we don't know a whole lot about the ARF troopers either. Um, but here's what we do know. Uh, they're going to have a Jedi attachment, which is a really cool thing. I don't know how mechanically it's going to exactly work, but this is, they're heavily implied that these will be generic Jedi that you can add, uh, you know, to your ARF troopers um, and possibly maybe run them as them on their own. You know, like it, it, the language was a little unclear about that. Uh, but what we, we know that there'll be a, there'll be a, a way to attach these to your ARF troopers. And first off, generic Jedi, big, big deal, big, big deal. Like this is, I think this is maybe one of the most significant things of the entire presentation uh, that they're finally doing generic Jedi. I think a lot of people have wanted that. I've wanted that for a long time. That's gonna be cool. Different, different sculpt kind of, or different build options. Yeah, because it, it, it looks like it's the same sculpt, but you're either building it with two lightsabers, or you can probably build them with one lightsaber, or build them with a double bladed saber with a hood, without a hood, hand up. You, heck, let's go crazy and do a double bladed saber and a regular lightsaber. You know, of course, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll give them lightsaber nunchucks, but you know, so I love this. I love this option. And if you can really customize your Jedi very much, maybe different head sculpt options too. Um, if you can really customize them a lot, then our ARF troopers, if they're core, I'm assuming core, but I don't know. Actually, I think they said these guys were going to be special forces. I think he let it slip that they're likely special forces, the ARF troopers, because he said something like this will add a lot of things to special forces units. I'm not going to hold him to that with, with like 100% because it was just kind of said kind of loose slipped in a way. So he could have misspoke, um, you know, because there were, there were a lot of little things where he, you know, forgot somebody's name or made a mistake. And you go through a lot of information and you're up in front of a lot of people and on camera. I'll give, I'll cut him a break. You can make a mistake. So I'm not sure for sure if the ARF troopers are special forces, but that is what was said. So I'll just assume that they're special forces for right now. The weird thing is if they are special forces, that's a lot of minis. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, with those rifles, I could see them being special forces, but with seven miniatures, you typically 
think of that as a core. But if we're attaching Jedi to them, that might be a little too much for core. You know what I mean? So I guess we'll see. I guess we will wait and see. All right. Um, moving forward. Moving forward. Um, they talked about resculpts a little bit. We got to look at the Obi Wan Kenobi resculpt. Now, if you guys are not familiar with re this resculpt initiative, this is a big deal. This is a big deal. They're resculpting everything that was done in soft plastic. And this is something they announced last year at Adepticon as a multi year event, uh, long, long term future stuff. Well, now we're a year later. Um, we're, it's still far out. We're still uh, they're still targeting 2025. This is targeted as summer 2025. So I do think we're going to start seeing some of the first reprints in 2025. I think you know the, the first thing they showed us was like stormtroopers and stuff. The fact that they say summer here means I'm thinking is actually going to be 2025. Um, so yes, they are going to resculpt stormtroopers uh, from the chat. Stormtroopers were already teased last year. Um, I'll I'll probably. There's a lot of information here, and over the over the next week or so, well, there'll be more and more videos. We'll talk more about it. Uh, there are going to be stormtroopers resculpted, Vader's being resculpted, everything from the core set is being resculpted. Uh, they uh, the the goal is to redo everything that was in soft plastic in the new hard plastic. But it doesn't stop there. They're also willing to resculpt hard plastic stuff that they think they could do better. And this one I'm on the fence about because they, they give us a new Grievous um, in hard plastic. And they said, like, they, you know, they couldn't do Obi-Wan without also doing Grievous. And I'm like, really? Uh, okay. I didn't think any, I had no problems at all with Grievous. I thought Grievous as is was totally fine. I'm, I really didn't think this needed to be done, especially before so many other soft plastic units are out. Like, like really? Like, he, I could see doing him eventually, but like this should have been like one of the last ones to be done, you know, because Grievous was already in hard plastic and Grievous was already a beautiful miniature. Maybe they just didn't like the the cloak for him or something. I, I don't know. I thought Grievous was, was, was fine. I thought he was a, a great miniature. Um, so, yeah, but they're, but they're doing that. My guess is that they're probably re-releasing re stuff in the same packs that they come in. Um, so it's like, I think you'll see like the the Clone Wars core set, maybe you'll see that again, or or certain Battle Force boxes or whatever, you'll see the reprints of, exact, of exactly the same format that things are in, but the plastic will be different. Um, and so maybe it made sense to redo Grievous because he was already in that Clone Wars core set or something like that. That's sort of what I'm guessing. Um, but yeah, yeah, um, very interesting stuff. And of course, we get the timeline of all of the Star Wars Legion uh, stuff that they talked about. Here's, uh, you know, that graphic that people will reference. I would expect a lot of this to get pushed further to the right. That is usually how it goes. And that's uh, the news. Then they went on to do Marvel Crisis Protocol. At that point, I kind of stopped watching. I'll tune in and catch up on Marvel Crisis Protocol eventually. It's a fun game, and, and so I don't want anybody to think that I have a, pro a big problem with Marvel Crisis Protocol. It's just not generally what I typically cover, and I'm trying to maximize my time. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. And most of you guys, most of my audience aren't tuning into me for Marvel Crisis Protocol news. And so um, there's other outlets out there that are covering Marvel Crisis Protocol in a much better detail. Uh, I do actually play the game, though. I play it from time to time. I enjoy the game, and uh, I think it's Atomic Mass's game's best game that they've created. I think it blows Shatterpoint out the water. It's a great game, um, but it's not what I cover. So uh, not 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 a whole lot. It's it's a it's a fun game. It's very and it's pretty too. So. Um, yeah, no, we got no Gungans. So um, let's go ahead and do our, our second uh, giveaway winner for the uh, Force Push right now. Uh, you just had to do a hashtag Star Wars. Um, just digging through the chat comments right now. And it looks like it's I've picked a random one. It's going to be Carol Bogus. K-A-R-O-L. Carol Bogus is a... Uh, go ahead and congratulations. Go ahead and shoot me an email at mailcrabbock at gmail.com. And uh, I'll get your information. Make sure you let me know what you won. 
because I do a lot of giveaways. Uh, there's giveaways on Patreon right now. There's giveaways in, uh, on Discord right now. Um, and so uh, this way I can get your, uh, get your you know, shipping information and I'll get that sent out to you. Um, so thank you guys, everybody, for, for playing along. If you want to stick around, uh, we will talk a little bit about... Um, let's talk about X-Wing and Armada and we'll talk about Warhammer also because, again, Adepticon had a lot of, a lot of new news. Um, there, were, there were lots of uh people talking about hey where's x-wing where's where's armada so like at the end of the um at the, at the end of the legion stream somebody asked a question on one of those um at one of the panels and it was kind of okay they were kind of met with like a snarky like well, you know we're not taking questions and and he was a little insistent and then like so like and it was this huge thing like, i still have no idea what was asked um but it, it sounded like he wanted to ask about X-Wing or Armada just for the sake of, like, are you going to talk about those events? That's my guess. Um, but, like, the, the, you know, the streamers, like, turned off the audio and everything. And it's just so weird that, like, everybody, you know, I don't know. wasn't a big uh, big fan of, the, of, of the, the people that AMG hired to stream their, uh, or they, the people that they kind of give access to to go stream their events because... There were commercials playing throughout the whole thing. There were like Avengers sound effects playing within the Twitch stream the whole time. It was, it was massively distracting and annoying. So, uh, really strange stuff. Um, no, so they didn't talk about they, they didn't talk about Armada or X Wing very much during this one. The only time that those games were even mentioned that I heard was uh, they were talking about the people who sculpted some of the things that we were seeing, and one of those people had worked on Armada and X Wing, and they mentioned that. Um, so, so that was like the name was mentioned, but I don't think that this necessarily means that the sky is falling for Armada and X-Wing. And I got two reasons why. First one is they're going to be doing mini extravaganza in July, which is sooner than, than usual. Um, so soon I wonder like why have mini extravaganza just like, um, like three months ish, three months and a few days, like after, uh, after this reveal, like I thought they would normally wait till like September, October, uh, kind of like, you know, keep it like six months apart. Uh, but unless, of course, there's going to be some stuff that they didn't talk about here. Like maybe at Mini Stravaganza is going to be the time they talk about X-Wing and Armada. Maybe. Maybe. I don't, I, I don't even, that, that's not a hopeful maybe. That's just a, uh, I'm going to throw a nickel in the bucket. I don't even know what that analogy means. I just made it up. You know, that's kind of how I would just be like, eh, maybe, you know, who knows, I, whatever. I don't expect them to ever talk about these games again. Um, but the other thing that is like why the sky isn't falling is like I did see um, on Ion Radio did a uh, an interview with Will Schick. Uh, they, they, he sat down on their stream. So Ion Radio was streaming Armada. Uh, Will Schick did sit down and talked a little bit about uh, Armada with those guys. And, and so that was nice of him. And it, it wasn't, he didn't confirm anything that was coming out. But he actually said, um, he acknowledged that the Clone Wars factions need more ships. Um, like, you know, he like cited like this deficiency of like things that certain factions needed for, for to get caught up. And that obvious, that's a far cry from saying we are making more ships. But I think if he had absolutely no intention of making more ships, he wouldn't even talk about that. Wouldn't even, you know, might not even go sit down at an Armada stream and jump in and casually chat with people. It's certainly a possibility. Um, I don't know. I I don't know. I don't th I don't know if I'll ever get anybody from AMG to come do an interview again. I think the only time they were nice to me was because Shatterpoint was coming out and they were trying to, you know, they didn't want me to like crap all over the game or anything like that. Uh, so I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, so point being, um, I think there's still going to be another rapid reinforcements coming out for, for Armada. Uh, I think that I, I see more and more reasons, more and more reasons to think that like, you know, again, we're going to see more Clone War ships. I think we'll see the, the, uh, the, the, the Archigens come out for the Republic. I think we'll see another version of an existing Separatist ship with just a different card. So I think the Se Separatists are going to get another ship as well. I think the Separatists are getting another ship. Um, you know, and I, they didn't want to talk about it during this panel. Maybe they only had so much time. And maybe they just really don't like those games, but they still are obligated to. I'm not sure. Um, there's, there's definitely a lot of things. Uh, 
Max uh, says he's sad we don't have Mace Windu yet. Like for Legion, um, I get that. I get that. Uh, but they're doing more of a focus on Jedi. Um, there's another thing they talked about with Legion, it's, and it's faction identity is a big important part of, of Legion for them. They're trying to um, make sure that certain factions have their own identity. And a big part of that, uh, the first part of that is, you know, those generic Jedi for the Republic. I like that. I like that idea. That sounds cool. Uh, it sounds like that could be a very, very good thing. Um, so, so yeah, there's there's a lot that was covered. If you guys are just tuning in now, we kind of already went through everything. Um, I'll just I'll run through it all again. Uh, Iden Versio, uh, Han Solo coming out in June with this new uh, pack for Shatterpoint. Then in July we're getting the uh, the Ghost Crew in two different packs. And in August we've got uh, Thrawn coming out with uh, oh, that's, that's exciting. I love seeing Thrawn with Callus. Uh, then we've got uh, later on we've got um, did I say Hunter Crosshair. I might have said Hunter when I first got it. Crosshair when he was with the Empire, uh, doing his like his little Shadow Trooper uh, expansion. Uh, we're getting Mandalorians. Uh, we're getting Bounty Hunters in a unit pack that is not a squad pack. They're just going to be a bunch of secondaries way to augment existing units. Um, Veers, Empire Strike Back themed. We're getting Veers. And then we're getting Lando uh, for Shatterpoint. Uh, and then we're getting uh, some different Jedi. Uh, we're getting uh, some generic... Uh, Jedi as well. We're getting a little Padawans for Shatterpoint. Uh, and there's our timeline. Legion, we're getting, we got to look at the range troopers, the clone commandos, the Bad Batch in a little more detail. Uh, we've got the Sleeper Cell pack. We've got Riot Control. We've got the Crabs. We've got a Terrain pack. We've got the Aqua Droids and the ARF Troopers, the Jedi Attachment for the ARF Troopers, and then Resculpts with Obi-Wan and Grievous. And uh, so it was a lot. We ran through all of that. So if you want to rewind the stream and watch it again, we'll talk a little bit more about those this week because there is a lot more to talk about. Uh, it's a very, very exciting time. And uh, I'm going to thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, uh, I, think that's, I think that's about it. We'll, get, we'll do a little Q&A before I wrap things up. I've been talking for a long time. My voice is starting to run out on me. I need to get some, need to get drink, get a drink and uh, coat, coat my throat. With, uh, with some orange juice. Orange juice is like the best thing to soothe a, a scratchy throat for me. I, you, you guys drink orange juice at all? I love orange juice. I used to hate orange juice as a kid. Now it's like one of my, my favorite things. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's see. I wanna, I'm going to scroll up and see some of the stuff. Um, let's see. Um, bah, 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 bah. No Gungans. Yeah, no, we didn't get any Gungans. Uh, no Shadow Collective. Um Oh yeah, yeah. For for at least, I would love to see more Shadow Collective. It wouldn't even take a whole lot. Maybe one single unit added to Shadow Collective. Um, I, one thing I think is kind of cool that they're doing uh, is the, that that unit pack for for Shadow Point, or just a bunch of secondaries. Wouldn't it be cool if they did something like that for Legion, and it was um, a bunch of secondaries that could go into different different units like what if it was like regular criminals and it's a shadow collective unit pack and these are heavy weapons that can go into the pikes or they can go into the uh the black sun or they can go in as as an operative by themselves or stuff like that like just different like you know like just different units that can augment existing stuff you know like that would be cool or i mean i guess a card pack could accomplish a lot of that in the same way um but yeah um a Mandalorian Battle Force. Uh, Grant says no Mando Battle Force. Um, not yet. I think it's going to be coming, though, because they have Mandalorians coming out for Shatterpoint. Um, so that means that there's probably been some some art requisitions to a lot of that. Listen to fans. They, they did give a lot of things that fans wanted, though. They gave a lot of popular things. Um, I know there have been a lot of people asking for stuff from Star Solo, a Star Wars story, for a long time. Like, Range Troopers is that. The Bad Batch and Mandalorian uh, content, like the Armorer and Paz Vizsla and stuff like that that were announced. There's people that want a lot of that stuff. Um, and a lot of more of that popular, critically acclaimed stuff is, is coming out for, for Shatterpoint first, which I does, you know, obviously the Legion players kind of get, get annoyed with that, and I get it. But, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's rough. It's, it's definitely rough. Um, when, we, when we come into here... 
and we look at some of the stuff that like generic Jedi. I feel like generic Jedi have been asked for for quite a while. I I feel like um, I have asked for Aqua Droids. I'm not gonna lie. I have definitely done that. I have asked for Aqua Droids uh, since I think the game first, or since the droids first came out. I've I've done it. I've uh, I said they should have. I, I said they should have infiltrate. I think they will. I think they will have infiltrate. I think that it would counter the uh, clone commandos a little bit. I think that'd be really cool. Um, so so yeah, I think there's stuff in here that people people been asking for crabs for forever. You know, that's like the number one most fan requested thing for some reason. It definitely wasn't on my list of requests. So, so when you say things like "listen to the fans," um, I feel like they are. The problem is, there's a lot of different fans that are asking for different things. There are certain things that rise to the top for sure. There's definitely things that rise to the top. Um, I, I'll go back to. X-Wing times when people were crying out for years for the gunboat and the gunboat finally showed up and it was like it was a huzzah moment and everybody lost their minds um, you know a similar thing with the crab similar thing with the crab droids not not as much delay and uh, but yes riot control and K2s I think is definitely something people in the fans wanted I don't I didn't see people crying out for uh, for this but they did listen to us with renaming this unit also yeah, because this was originally supposed to be called Rebel Saboteurs, and uh, there was already a unit called Rebel Saboteurs, so that wasn't going to work. And a lot of people pointed that out. I think I pointed that out a lot in all of my content, and I'm sure everybody else did as well. I don't listen to all the uh, podcasts and stuff out there, even though there's some really good Legion podcasts out there. You know, like the, like the Stabcast and the Fifth Trooper and, uh, and Notorious Scoundrels and all these uh, all these awesome Legion podcasts that are out there. Um, there there's many more. I, those are just some that come to mind. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, well, if you just hopped in, you missed you missed pretty much everything. It's okay. It's all here. You can rewind. You can rewind the live stream. We talk about all the Shatterpoint. We talk about all of the Legion news. And, uh, and I did promise that towards the end we talk a little bit about 40k. So I don't have any graphics for, for 40k. Um, let's go back. Uh, I'll just settle on the home screen for right now. Um, so do we have any Warhammer players in the channel? Because um, there is definitely some, there's some news for, for Warhammer. Um, I, I had to talk a little bit, as I have a friend who's, uh, my friend Sean is much bigger into Warhammer and Games Workshop lore than I am. Um, but there was a lot of new things. Uh, there was some, some Necromunda news. There was I was hoping that we were going to see a Battlefleet Gothic relaunch because that would have maybe scratched the Armada itch a little bit with some folks. But that didn't uh, that did not happen. Uh, at least not yet. Maybe next year. Who knows? Um, but uh, the big news is Age of Sigmar is getting fourth edition. Uh, I do play Age of Sigmar. I play Stormcast Eternals. I play Hammers of Sigmar and. Um, and I really enjoy it. It's it's a fun game. I don't create a lot of content on it, although I sometimes post pictures on on social media. I'm painting some dragons up for the uh, the draconic uh, army of renown for for Stormcast right now. Um, so it's interesting to me to see a fourth edition come out because this will be the first brand new edition that I'm playing through. So this will be my first like edition transition, if that's a term. Um, so and it's an interesting thing because I think there's there's apl applications of it that apply to all the other games. X-Wing, when they did their first edition to second edition and all of this other stuff, um, they had this conversion kit and all this. I, and I think that was the wrong way to go. I don't think with with, um, with GW, you don't have to get a conversion kit. You just have to get the rule book. Um, they give out free rules. So I just download, you know, at least for a while. Like all the, all the rules and codexes and stuff will be available for free for a while. And after a certain amount of time, they're like, all right, now you got to buy them. Um, if you didn't get them already. But... People already have all the PDFs and stuff like that. So you can basically get the rules for free. If you want a nicer version, you can buy the books. I'm excited, though, because it just means, like, all my whole army now is, like, everything's going to be balanced differently. And I don't have just a very narrow army. I have enough to run, like, two armies of Stormcast, probably. Um, probably more than that. Like, it's it's theoretically possible I could probably fit three armies of Stormcast. W with the Draconic Army of Renown right now, if I put all my dragons together, that's one army. And then I can just take all the rest of my Stormcast and probably split them up into two, two more armies. So I've got a lot of Stormcast. Uh, they have a 
crap ton of, uh, of models. They have, I think, more than anybody else by a long shot. Um, but so even if stuff gets rebalanced and shifted around, I have enough that I can just make new armies and then they'll function differently. So I'm getting all kinds of like probably new new battle tomes. And a battle tome for is basically the unit card. What what does the unit do? Or war scrolls, I mean. That's the war scroll. The battle tome is the rule book for the faction that goes into the lore. Like half three quarters of it is all just story about the about the this faction. But uh and then pictures of people's painted armies. But um but yeah, it's, it's exciting. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with 4th edition. There's, there's a lot of new things that they're going to be doing with it. Um, and I never really got into 40k. I have a couple of 40k miniatures, um, but not enough for a whole army. I, I did uh, that 40... Uh, for when I hit 40,000 subscribers, I started doing some 40k stuff because they had put out... Was it 9th edition? 9th edition or 10th edition? I don't know what, what, what edition we're on on 40k right now. But, but yeah, it's cool stuff. I like the way they do editions. It's a, it's a way to keep the game relevant, keep the game refreshed. They do a new edition every three or four years or so. They're on 10th edition right now. That's what it was, yeah. Um, it's a money sink? Uh, well, yeah, if you played for 30 years. I don't know. I, I thought I lost a lot more money in Magic the Gathering than I did in any other tabletop game. I think I spent about $30,000 over, over my lifetime in Magic the Gathering. So that's why one of the reasons I don't do that. Will you cover Halo Flashpoint? Yeah, I, I actually want to. I watched the video on Halo Flashpoint. I thought it looked pretty interesting. It looks, it looks solid. It looks like they're doing some really cool things, and I think it's worth some coverage. I don't know how well it will it will fly, how well it will do, but I uh, and I wrote to Mantic. I, mean, I might write to them again. I would love to review that. I would love to have an opportunity to get a review copy of uh, Halo Flashpoint. It looks cool. It's got this system of like, you don't have to measure range. Every, it's just squares on the, like they use like, cubes, basically. How many cubes away are you? I'm like, oh, that's that's brilliant. That's 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 very different. I mean, it's, it, it's not that different. Other games have done it, but it's like board games have done that, but I haven't seen too many miniatures games that do that. That's a really cool. Ah, uh, very cool. Mm. So, yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to that. Um, I, Miss, Mr. Jedi Dude, I feel that they think the rebels want to uh, uh, were just poorly armed and were in tiny cells. I want to see the frontline rebel units like commandos, like the rebel shock troopers, like Cara Dune. Yeah, I would love to see some more shock troopers. That would be that would be pretty cool. Um, I think you get a little bit of a view in that in the in the uh, the uh, around the the, arm, the battle of uh, Jakku and. Um, you know, like early New Republic era, you you see a lot of that. Um, it could be really cool um, from the from the aftermath books too. There was a lot of stuff that went into that. That could be fun. That could be fun. They they they. I think the problem with that is when they're creating something, they have to think how recognizable is it? How many people are going to know what a Rebel Shock Trooper is? Arguably more so now than before because Mandalorian and Cara Dune talking about that. You know, seeing how tough she is. Um, and seeing, you know, how popular the Mandalorian is, you might be able to get away with it now. Um, but it's still not as recognizable as a lot of other stuff. So, uh, and the and a Rebel sleeper cell, while that, while Andor, not everybody has seen Andor, um, it's still things that we associate with the Rebellion. And, and you know, and so I, I, I feel like that was probably a safer bet. But... Yeah, I, I would love to see um, some more aggressive rebels, some more like, you know, more than just those rebel command. Like the rebel commandos, for example, were just, just okay. I think if they were to come out today, if they were made today, they'd probably be a lot more powerful. But I, but you do have, you do have Mandalorians on the rebel side. The rebels have a lot of mandos that they can run. So there is also that, and you're going to be able to put the bad batch in with the rebels too. So you are going to get some strong rebels. You are going to get some strong rebels. Um, yeah. So, I, but you're not wrong. You're definitely not wrong. Uh, you said I'm jaded because I'm old, and you played the West End game stuff for years, and they had a lot of rebel stuff fleshed out. Oh yeah. You know they re-released the West End games rule book a few years ago. Uh, that was kind of cool. I never did play the old West End games, but a lot of the what it created uh, influenced my early Star Wars knowledge because the decipher. Um, card game had a lot of, I think, similar similar lore that was like printed on all the cards. Like I knew what a Blastech E11 was before before I was even in high school 
or whatever, you know. Um, or maybe, well, no, when I was in high school, before I graduated high school, you know. Like, I knew way too much, like, you know, nerdy stuff um, at an early age, and a lot of it was just reading over, pouring over those cards. So it was really cool. It was a fun time. All right, guys, that's going to do it. Um, I'll be talking more about this next week. Uh, be sure to, uh, you know, make sure you're subscribed, share the video with your friends so they can find out what's, what all is going on. Um, I thought it was important to kind of talk about this stuff too because the stream that was set up just had so many like commercial breaks in the middle of them talking and then like sound effects and it was, it was, it's rough. It's hard to, to watch a stream on Twitch with all of the, the little bells and whistles overriding what you're actually trying to hear and commercials coming in and it doesn't pause the stream. So whatever they announce during the commercial break and they're like, like three minute commercial breaks or two minute commercial breaks. It's just, it's, it's, it's nonsense. It's nonsense. Anyway, uh, I'm going to I'm gonna queue up an ad for the end of the video. Uh, we'll see if it works, and then I'll see you guys later. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Um, big thanks to my patrons. You guys are out of this world and help make this whole channel possible. I will thank you so much for watching. May the force be with you. Live long and prosper. Be excellent to each other. Party on, dudes. And always wash your socks.